This video will explain how to import data measured in the field with Leica Captivate into applications in CAD's Enforce Office software. In particular, it focuses on the import of coding and line work. This video does not include the importing of multi-station scan data or images, as this will be covered in another video. Ideally, as much drawing as possible is automated when importing the data into Enforce. This video will show what drawing can be automated, including the importing and representation of all points and codes, detailing the total station setup information and measurement data, and, assuming the correct settings are made, the correct drawings of lines, line work and line styles, the correct drawing of symbols, and the display of descriptive text. This video is delivered in three parts. The first part is the workflow section, which initially looks at the data within Leica Captivate and then shows the process within Enforce to import the data, including showing what field data can be reproduced. The second part is a look behind the scenes that goes through the Enforce configurations needed to achieve part one. The third part is optimization, which shows how making a few small changes to the field procedures can further streamline the workflow and improve the final result. Before continuing to watch this video, it is recommended to have watched the other how-to videos which explain coding and line work within Leica Captivate. It is worth noting that the settings made in the second part of this video were already in place when the first part was made. This means that for a brand new installation, we would need to make the settings explained in the second part before importing our data. This job is the one which was initially created during the two coding and line work videos, so we already know it a little. However, we should look at it again and in more detail. The best way to do this is to use the 3D Viewer app. In the coding and line work videos, we actually measured this tree, but separate to the video, we've also added some dimensional attributes for the tree height, its canopy or spread, and to confirm the species of the tree. In this job, we also measured plenty of linear features, such as fences, footpaths, and curbs, which includes some more complicated line work, which we will look at. Here, there is a fence, gate, fence combination, and then here, there is a T-junction between two fences. This is an arc which is defined by three points. And this is a best fit arc which is defined by multiple points. And then here, we have the pond code, which was measured using a spline and, in this case, measured as a closed line. Now that we have a good overview of the data, we can move on. As Enforce is able to import from a Leica Captivate job format directly, we have two choices. Firstly, to import our data just as coordinates, a very quick and simple one-step process suitable for GNSS data or whenever we aren't interested in setup information or observations. Secondly, we can import the data as observations. Again, this is a very quick process, but this time we do get more information because we're able to reproduce and review our setup and observations. In actual fact, there's no problem to use either route with Leica Captivate data, and there's almost no difference in the process. We just have to reduce our data if we use the observation route. For now, we'll use that observation route as it allows us to show that the total station setup and observations are fully understood by Enforce. First, we right click on observations and select to import Leica DBX data. Next, we navigate to and choose the job to import. Then we confirm how we want the data to be converted into Enforce. As this is data from Leica Captivate, we select to use an XML import routine with Leica Captivate string numbers. Now we can see that the observations have been read into the software, but at the moment they do not have coordinates, so we simply run a reduction on the data. Now we are able to see a report of a setup. In this case we don't need it, so we can close it and just see that our points now all have coordinates. Let's take a closer look at what has been imported. We can see that the tree has been drawn with the correct symbol, as has this manhole, and that the line work is virtually as it was on board, correctly drawn with line styles and line colors. So let's take a look at the more complicated line work and see how Enforce has handled it. Here we can see the fence gate fence combination has been drawn correctly, as has the T junction between two fences. The arc defined by three points is also drawn correctly, and also, the spline and closed line have been drawn correctly for the pond. Actually, the only line work not shown as it was in the field is the best fit arc defined by multiple points. This is because Enforce does not draw lines which do not directly pass through the points which define them. By doing things a little differently in the field, such as changing the way the best fit arc was measured in the first place, 
or by modifying the code list to better fit N4 supported attributes, we can actually achieve more and have an even better drawing straight from the field as shown here. This additional optimization will actually be covered in part three of this video. So for now, we can end part one and go behind the scenes for part two of the video. The most important thing that was configured before we imported our data in part one was the codes. Because when data is imported, any object with a code that is already defined in Enforce will be imported with the desired point, line, symbol, shape, and text attributes. However, if the incoming dataset uses codes that do not match ones defined in Enforce, then the objects will be drawn according to default settings, which would typically result in data looking something like this. Yes, the data has all been imported and the positions are correct, but symbols and lines are almost all missing. So it is well worth spending a few minutes setting up the codes in order to save time in the office with every single data set. So let's take a look at how we can make those configurations. Inside Enforce, it is the display codes area where we are able to define how features are drawn. Here we can see a pop-up box showing our Enforce code table. It contains a list of all the defined code prefixes that Enforce will recognize, as well as various tabs to configure the settings for the highlighted code, and some additional settings that are independent of the selected code. So let's start with those independent settings. First of all, there's a dimensions button, containing a definition of identifiers to indicate how an attribute value entered in the field should be used to control the size of shapes, symbols, or offsets. For example, if a point has a code that requires a circle to be drawn, and the point has an attribute with the label D, then Enforce would know that the value of this attribute should be used as a diameter of the circle. For now, we will not use this feature, but we'll come back to it in part three of the video. Next, there is a comma codes button, which allows the definition of how characters which occur alongside a code influence the drawing of the data. For example, if a code that creates a line or string between points is used, but with a comma C at the end of the code, the line will then be drawn curved rather than straight. Also, there is an auto string in checkbox, which tells Enforce to use the code and string number together to create strings, even if a feature is not measured all in one go. We need this on, so we should make sure that it is ticked. And finally, there is a code import convention setting, which would allow different methods of recording codes, comma codes, and dimensions to be used. But we do not need to activate this, so can leave it unselected. Now we can move on to the main part of the coding window, where we can select a code and then use the different page tabs to define how the data of that selected code will be imported and displayed. In the points tab, we can define how the points that belong to each code are handled, things like what layer the points will go onto, what point symbol should be used to mark the point's location, and if the point is part of the model or not. In the lines page tab, we can set if lines are to be drawn for the code, we can set the line layer, style and color, and additional line behavior. In the symbol page tab, we can set if a specific symbol should be drawn for a feature, such as a tree. We can set its layer and color, and set the type or scaling for the symbol. For example, a one point scaled feature uses a single point with a dimension to draw the selected symbol. In the text page tab, we can specify if text is to be made visible or not for data of this code. We can specify what the text should be and how it should be displayed. The shape page tab allows us to add simple shapes to features. Shapes actually work in a similar way to symbols where we are able to define their layer, color, style, the shape itself and its scaling. In fact, they can be used in combination with symbols to make more complex graphics with parts that scale independently from one another. The height, number and code page tabs allow us to configure if the points height, ID and code are displayed as text by the point and how that text would be displayed. The final page tab is fields. This allows us to specify which of the dimension codes this particular code expects and what their default value will be. With that all understood, it should also be noticed that it is possible to save and load these code tables within Enforce and to import or export them to other systems. For example, to export them to a Leica code list via an XML format. For the job used in the coding and linework videos, no particular thought went into what office software the data would end up in, so everything was completed using very generic codes such as centerline, fence, footpath, gate, curb, manhole, pond, tree, verge bottom, verge top, and wall. So for Enforce to correctly read the data from this job, 
we have to add new codes for all of these. Here we can load a code table that was created especially for this video. It contains all of the codes needed for the data except for verge bottom, so this code can be created now. It is worth noting that when we create a new code, the configuration of the code that was highlighted as we press the add button is used for the starting configuration of new codes. So it's very quick and easy to add new codes by highlighting a similar existing codes and essentially duplicating it. With this all done, we can press OK to set the code table and return to our data. Here, we can simply redraw the graphics to show how our data has been updated. Now we can see that we have data that looks right, with line styles and colors matching our original drawing, and we have symbols drawn, although not yet scaled, and descriptive text displayed. The scaling will come on to in part three of the video, so now let's just look at this descriptive text. We can do that by investigating the tree to see what attributes were recorded with the code. We can then take a look at the text page tab of the tree code within our Enforce code table by using the quick access button here. Here we can see that the description is made up of both fixed text and some additional text that's calling attributes. To better understand how this is working, we can delete it all and simply type in some fixed text. Now when we confirm this and return to our drawing, we can see that just the fixed text is displayed. But if we want this text to be more intelligent again, then we can edit the text field and use commands such as backslash n for a new line or brackets made of the percentage symbol to allow the name of an attribute to be entered. Enforce will then look for and replace these percentage brackets with the value of the attribute with that name, as shown here with this tree code. Now we understand how to build and edit our code table in Enforce, and we have already seen how straightforward the import process is, we can move on to part three of the video, optimization. As this data was collected in a generic way in the field, there are some Enforce features which we were unable to utilize, features which would have further automated the office work. An example of this is the full scaling of symbols, and another is a way for us to have avoided the best fit arc situation on the fence. So we'll start by looking at using code attributes to scale symbols. In the code table, we were able to define the dimension identifier for using attributes to define the dimensions. For example, with this tree, it uses a tree code, which has a symbol that requires a scale, and we have the letter S defined as a dimension identifier for scale. This means that for Enforce to recognize a scale that we enter on site as the scale to use for this symbol, then the attribute label must be seen as S rather than canopy as it is here. We have two choices. We can either modify our code list so that the attribute label is canopy space S, or we can simply edit the data inside Enforce from canopy to S. When building or improving our workflow, we would of course use the modify the code list approach, as that way it will all work smoothly in the future. If we did modify our code list, then it would be very easy because there'd be no change to our workflow. It's simply that when we go to enter the attribute, its name now contains space S as well as canopy. For one-off cases, such as in this video, we can simply make the change manually in the data. To do this, we enter into the attributes at a point and replace the word canopy with the letter S. Now we can see the symbol has resized. We can actually do the exact same for the manhole, where we need to use a dimension identifier D rather than the word diameter. Although in this case, we must also remember to update the text for this code as it was referring to the attribute whose name we have just changed. Now we can see how making that very small change to our attributes, either in the code list for a permanent solution or in the data in Enforce for a one-time fix, has given us a much better result. The final thing which we could modify to give us a better overall result is the advanced line work, the multiple point best fit curve on one of the fences. Here we can see that Enforce has included two points on an additional fence line, separate to the main fence. This is because these two points were used to define the curve in Leica Captivate, but were not actually on the curved line itself. If we just want to put these two points back into the fence manually in Enforce, we can just go to the tabular view and add the desired string number to the codes manually ourselves, and to apply comma C to the code of these points, as this is Enforce's comma code for curving, this approach solved the situation this one time, but it wouldn't stop it reoccurring, so probably a better approach is to measure the feature using straights, three-point curves and splines in the field, avoiding the problem occurring. 
And finally, we can move on to free codes, codes that we can enter into Leica Captivate, which do not belong to any specific line or point. They do not do anything for us live in the field, but are commands for the software back in the office, allowing access to some of Enforce's more advanced drafting and line work functionality. The easiest way to enter a free code is to have some in our code list, which Enforce automatically does for us when exporting the code list from the display codes code table screen. When we're then in the field, we just select the free code that we want to use at any given time by accessing the select free codes panel of Leica Captivate. To do this, we make sure that it is configured onto a hotkey or in the user favorites panel, so that when we are collecting data and want to add one of these free codes, we simply call the command to see a list of our codes. When we do that, what we really see is a list of the additional functionalities that Enforce can apply to our data upon import. More information about any of the extra functionality that Enforce can offer here can be found by talking to your local applications in CAD representative or by reviewing some of the Enforce help and training files. With the data all edited and our knowledge of how to improve our field work extended, we can now see that the data much better represents the initial survey. The symbols are scaled as we required, the lines all curve as they did in the field, and our data all looks exactly as we desire. This shows that with the right combination of code lists, code table, and site procedure, we're able to automate a huge amount of the office work, and we quickly end up with data in Enforce that truly represents what we did in the field with minimal fuss and minimal user interaction needed.